Good afternoon and welcome to St. Peter Mancroft, whether you're watching online or whether you're visiting in church. My name is Catherine Wadhams. I'm a licensed lay minister here. If you're in church, please feel free to continue your visit as I lead our short weekly reflection. Today, I want to talk about Evensong. I wonder if you've been to Evensong recently, perhaps here at St. Peter Mancroft on most Sunday evenings, or at the cathedral here, as in most cathedrals, almost every day. I'm thinking of a traditional service, usually led by a choir. There isn't much congregational participation, more an opportunity to join in some parts of the service rather than an expectation. There are usually between two and four hymns and some said prayers, including a confession on Sundays. It seems a timeless sort of service, and in many ways it reflects the pattern of prayer which Jesus would have used with his own disciples. They would certainly have been familiar with the Psalms and the Old Testament reading. The service therefore does have a link, a direct lineage back to the very beginning of Christianity and even beyond that to the older Judaic tradition. The form of Evensong today was determined by a Reformation council in the 16th century, which included both traditionalists and reformers. You can imagine the negotiations and compromises made under the leadership of the reforming Archbishop Thomas Cranmer. They produced the first Book of Common Prayer, which was required to be used in all English churches from 1549 replacing Latin in the services with English. This in itself caused difficulties in parts of the country, like Cornwall, where English was not spoken. Cranmer's Evensong reflected the monastic tradition which had been followed in the monasteries and their communities which had been dissolved in the Reformation. It combined two evening services, Vespers and Compline, which the monks and the nuns would have sung. It's interesting that the modern forms of Evensong and Compline in the Church of England follow this pre-Reformation pattern, with Mary's song of joy at expecting Jesus, the Magnificat, at Vespers, and the more reflective song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis, his re reaction to meeting the baby Jesus at the, temp at the temple, and that's included now in Compline. But Cranmer's Evensong includes both these canticles, wonderful compliments in energy, joy, vision, acceptance. There are also psalms, Bible readings, some sung responses, and a mixture of prayers, some sung and some said, on behalf of the congregation. It's that prayer book pattern which is still followed nearly 500 years later. Much worship has been revised and translated into modern English, but there's been renewed interest in this traditional prayer book service, both here and abroad. Rather surprisingly, the Danish Evangelical Lutheran Church and Dutch churches have both introduced the service in the last 15 years or so, sung partly in English for occasional use. The choirs of Roskilde Cathedral in Denmark sing even song twice a month, and their website shows a wonderfully traditional English lineup of men and boys choir in cassocks. So what is the attraction of this traditional service? Perhaps one of the reasons Evensong is so effective is its lineage. It packs so much of the deep history and tradition of Christianity and Anglicanism into 45 minutes in what some have called an elegantly simple form. The music itself is clearly also an attraction. It may have been composed very recently or hundreds of years ago. We're invited to reflect on the words and music. 
Of course, this service, which is largely choir-led with so little congregational participation needed, especially enables each person to experience the service in their own way. Catherine King summarized much of this in the title of her thesis, Tranquility, Transcendence and Retreat, the transformative practice of listening at Evensong. And perhaps it's just that listening which is the attraction, a chance to stop rushing from one thing to another, fretting about whether we've remembered everything we should have done, promised to do, engaging in a world where modern communications bring us much information and many concerns, and where our own worries about ourselves, about other people, about the world can so easily feel overwhelming. Of course, coming to a service rarely solves our problems, but it can give us some perspective and relief from worrying about them, a chance to hold them in a safe space. I often find I can allow myself to be deeply moved in a church service, perhaps even to cry a little about sadness or bereavement or worries. The sadness doesn't go away, but there's a chance to acknowledge it and find a place for it in my life. The music which is integral to choral evensong also makes it a special experience, almost like a concert with spiritual dimensions. You don't have to be a music expert to relax into hearing the organ play and the choir sing and the slightly archaic words. It engages the senses rather more than the intellect. Though, of course, the sermon and some of the Bible readings can be quite challenging. Even songs been called the atheist's favorite service, which I feel reflects its broad welcome to people who are seeking a space for reflection, to people who are exploring faith in the context of the church's traditions, to people who are more mature in their faith and particularly value this form of expression. Indeed, atheist Richard Dawkins has been quoted as saying, I have a certain love for Evensong. This special reflective service offers contemplative opportunities for people of all faiths and none. It feels like a sort of subliminal place between the secular world and the divine. If you want a taste of Evensong at home, Radio 3 continues to broadcast a weekly live Evensong service each Wednesday at 3 o'clock, which is repeated the following Sunday at 4. It happens to be the BBC's longest-running outside broadcast programme. And of course, these days you can catch up with many of their earlier broadcasts. Here at St. Peter Mancroft, there is choral even song most Sundays throughout the year. Last week, we saw the annual service at St. John Madder Market, just across the market here, to celebrate the feast of John the Baptist. Norwich Cathedral holds choral even song most days. And some country churches open for occasional services of even song, particularly at this time of year. These may be said rather than sung, a different experience of rest and timelessness in a rural setting. Within the variety that the Church of England has in its services, even song does remain a unique and special experience. It isn't always the most popular service, but however many or few there are in the pews, it is a wonderful chance to offer musical gifts to and praise to God, and we are very lucky to have a choir to lead us in such worship, and grateful for their gifts and hard work in practicing and leading the service. We are privileged and pleased to participate in that service, and to welcome anyone who may be seeking tranquility, transcendence, or retreat.